Hi everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and on this week's episode you're going to be joining me test driving this beauty. Now before we get started let's talk a little bit about the car. It's a 1957 VW Beetle with the oval window at the rear and to those in the know in the VW world you'll notice the bullet indicators here and they're kind of a, a one year only deal. It's 1956, 57 they were on uh, these cars. Although I'm pretty sure they were the same ones that were on split screen campers uh, uh, up until mid 60s, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, VW people. Um, color wise, it's metal blau, which sounds quite, you know, uh, exotic, but it's just German for metallic blue. But it's such a stunning car, um, st stunning color. Let's have a look at the rear window because that's the iconic bit. Now this is the angle I love about the oval window beetle because I mean just look at it, all the curves just sloping down here and then swooping back up here and the oval window in the roof of the car with the slats here, it's just oh beautiful, little, small little rear lights and everything. It's, it's about as good as car design gets if you ask me. But we're not here to talk about that. You want to know about what's inside here. So let's open that up. Now in a previous episode, click on the linky link above and uh, we'll get that linked in there. We were covering the bolting kit that we use to convert our VW Beetles. But in this episode, you can see it all in the car. So what have we got in here? We've got a small rear Tesla drive unit buried down there. We've got the seven kilowatt charger there. We've got a header tank here, which is nice and warm because we've been driving to get here. Radiator and fan system down there and charge socket over there because there's no external fuel filler flap on a 1957 Beetle. Uh, so charge socket is there. Um, so there you go, looks pretty OEM and it's all bolt in as well. So that's all you can see in the rear. Let's have a look in the front. So here we are in the front, there's a front battery pack in here obviously, there's a 35 kilowatt hour battery pack total and this front pack bolts onto the existing uh, mounting points if you like of the original petrol tank. You do lose some luggage space, there's no getting away from that, but you've still got some luggage space because don't forget the curvature of the bonnet goes up here. So, uh, But one benefit of that uh, weight in the front is it improves the handling if you like by having a little bit more weight over the front axle, which is no bad thing in a Beetle. And the rest of the battery pack is behind the back seat and on top we have a coolant header tank for the battery system because there's two coolant systems on this vehicle. One is for the motor and inverter in the back and the other is for the battery pack to keep the batteries at that Goldilocks zone if you like of not too hot and not too cold. So again lost some luggage space behind there but I can live with that for the additional amount of power and reliability that comes with electric. Right, that's enough about this. We've got work to do. So, Tim, get in the car, mate. We've got some test driving to do. Right, now, before we even get started, I know there's one that needs to go on the list straight away, and it's... A problem that Tim's had with his body over the years, it's age-related sagging, isn't it, Tim? That's right, definitely. <laughs> this is a 1957 Beetle, and what's happened is the front suspension is sagging on the driver's side. And um, how the suspension works on the front, it's torsion bar leaves. So imagine some uh, leaves, um, basically some flat bits of metal going across uh, like that from wheel to wheel and there's a, a number of them stacked on top of each other like that in a square and the twisting motion of those gives you the car spring and over the years they've just you know they've sagged a little bit essentially so on this side I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera so I'm going to do a, a a pokey finger demonstration so on this side from the top of the wing I'm hitting the tyre and if I go over the other side this is the British standard test finger. It is a British standard test finger. I have to use the same finger, not my left finger, the right finger again. And now I'm not even touching the tie. In fact, I can probably get two fingers in there. Oh, just about. So it's about that much difference, at least left to right. So we definitely need to address that because going around, uh, going around right corners. Yep. I'm 
feeling more sort of like, you know, lean as I'm going around right corners compared to going around left corners. So the way to fix that is essentially we take the leaves out and we replace them and they're readily available parts. So that's going on the list straight away before we even start this test. So one of the first things we do once we've converted the car is we go out and test drive it, obviously. But what is test driving? What am I trying to achieve here today? Well, we're looking for a number of things, if you like. You know, first of all, does the electric conversion work? Well, you know, it should work. This is probably our, or getting close to our 70th converted classic car now. So it's not our first rodeo. So everything in that respect should work. However, there will be some fine tuning that we might need to do. The second thing we're looking for is, well, quite frankly, this is a 65 plus year old car. There may well be some quirks and some remedial work that needs to be done to make sure it's 100% if you like. And then the third thing is, are there any enhancements that we can do to try to improve the overall experience of this car? Such as putting disc brakes on the front, because it originally had drum brakes, which we've already done. So Tim's sitting in the passenger seat with a notepad and pen, ready to take some notes. Let's get into it. Now, first thing I've noticed, I'm a straight here, and the steering wheel is not straight. So, number one, Tim, steering wheel needs to be uh, straightened up. And on a Beetle, there's hopefully an easy way to do this, which is, if we're lucky, take the steering wheel off, turn it around one spline, put it back on. But if not, that doesn't nail it. We may need to do some tweaking on the steering rods themselves. Now, second thing, which you can probably hear in the background, which you probably wouldn't have heard if it was a petrol engine in the back, is there's a squeaky suspension bush on the back, which is driving me nuts today. So that definitely needs to get sorted out. So one to put on the enhancement list is anti-roll bar on the front. Now, from the factory, the 1957 VW Beetle never had an anti-roll bar on the front, but going around these corners, I think it definitely needs one. And that will improve the experience, if you like, for the client. And, you know, these seats are probably the opposite of bucket seats, I'd say, Tim, what do you reckon? Yeah, they're not, they're not like bucket seats at all, are they? No, so, you know, having less body roll, if you like, will improve them somewhat. So, enhancement, front anti-roll bar needs to go on. Right, another thing I've just noticed is the regen is too high on this. So every time I come off the throttle, it's like, oh, that's really slowing us down. And you need to be very careful with regen on a rear motored car, because if too much, it'll be like pulling up the handbrake. So I'm gonna pull over now, I just do a little bit of tweaking with the app. Right, I've pulled over now and I've connected to the motor control app, as you can see. So the motor is at 30 degrees Celsius, for instance. But one of the benefits of electric vehicles, if you like, is the fact that you can tune them so easily and readily to the application. So what I'm going to do now is go into the settings and the peak horsepower of that motor in the back is 300 horsepower. You don't want that in a 1957 Beetle. So I'm going to reduce that way down to about there I reckon Now the other parameter I want to change is the regenerative braking because as I noticed when I was driving it the re regen was a little bit too fierce and you've got to be careful uh, with a rear engine car with too much regen so if I reduce the regen as well down in fact I'm going to bring it way down to single numbers and let's write the settings and try that that's how simple and easy it is to improve increase or decrease the power of the motor and increase or decrease the power of the regen to braking. It's as simple as that. So let's go and try it. Right, let's test this regen setting. So on this straight, I'm gonna come off the pedal. That's better. That's better. And as we're going to stop, it's increasing and yeah, perfect. So I've nailed that straight away. Yeah, sounds a lot right. better, doesn't it? Be interesting to see how the power now because you've reduced it going up the hill if we're still going to have enough torque to get us up the hill. Well, there's a big hill here, so let's give it a go. 
Um, as we're waiting for this van to do a three-point turn in the middle of nowhere in front of us, we're on quite a steep hill here, and I'm holding it on the accelerator. Notice that. Really? There's no clutch control, yeah, there's no brake. Cool. That's just me holding it on the accelerator. And this is quite a steep hill now, so if really you steep. put your foot down... If I put my foot down, I'm going to go up the rear of this Vauxhall Mocha, which is really struggling to go up the hill. He's probably looking in his rearview mirror, wondering what on earth's going on with the 1957 Beetle right up his chuff. Oh, that's plenty of power. You don't want any more than that there. Oh, 57 Beetle, dear. Yeah. Right, I suppose we better check some of the other uh, things working in here. Uh, let's try the heater. So I've got a two-speed fan from Max. And put the heater on. Can you feel it coming out there? Oh yeah, oh, straight yeah, away. That's warm. Straight away, heat. That's a lot more heat than you'd normally have coming out of the uh, petrol version of this car. And it doesn't smell of exhaust fumes. Right, DJ, hit some tunes. See if that works. Does it play 1950s music? I hope not. It doesn't play any music. Does it not work? No, it doesn't work. It's one for the list. Right, add that to the list then. Fix the old, what is it, Motorola? Motorola. That is a volumatic. Class looking stereo, that. Yeah, it's cool. Right, fix the uh, stereo. So, we've got some uh, snagging to do. We've got a little list for the boys to be cracking on with. So, steering needs to be sorted out, it's not on straight. Uh, what else do we have? Stereo. Stereo. Uh, we've adjusted some of the parameters on the motor, so that's pretty much done. Uh, but I think top of the list... The squeaky bush. The squeaky bush. It's been yeah. driving us nuts for the whole day. So that's definitely got to get sorted out. There we go! One of the perks of my job, I think, getting to drive these cars and test drive them once they're finished. But uh, there's a a short list of jobs that the guys are going to do once uh, we get this back to the workshop but I think I'm happy with that so hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you on the next one uh.